So I want to explain how I build websites or apps using AI. For this specific example, we're going to be using uh, product requirement docs generated by ChatGPT's O1. We're going to be using Cursor to go ahead and actually write the code and build the landing page for us. Um, and the way I actually get started with all of this is by creating a detailed product requirement doc. Now, I'm not going to show you the prompt that I sent through because the last time I did this, somebody copied the entire prompt, created a Google Doc and said that this would be useful for other people. The problem is your product requirement doc will be completely di different to my product requirement doc. So I'm going to explain how I put them together and why I do it. First of all, this is a full chat thread with in the earlier messages, which I'm not going to scroll through. Um, it basically is just me mind dumping what my app does, what the landing page needs to say, copywriting advice, a whole load of other bits and pieces like that. And I just did this to brainstorm how the app should go together. So for example, currently on one of my websites, and we're going to be building a new page here, um, you can see we've got different sections to the app. We've got different text stacks that people will be using coming through my program. Uh, sort of an everything you need for free section, an FAQ section, and then just some call to action section. So it's a pretty simple website. But the most important thing is when we're building with AI, especially if you're a beginner, you want to be creating as many components as possible. So you can see here, I've got the tech info panel component, and that is this component here. So I've basically explained to O1 that I want to have that. You can have a look through. This is the uh, tech stack that I'm going to be using. But basically, I've said create a detailed product requirement doc on exactly how to build these websites, this web page. Uh, come up with all of the sections, design what the UI should look like, the design styles, the colors, all of those other things, right? It's then four for 16 seconds. You can see what it's thinking through, right? And then it's gone ahead and it's built me this. So it's got each section. It knows what each section should look like. And it's also should theoretically have included copy examples, right? So this is for an app that I'm launching and I'm building a landing page for it. And it's included the copy examples. And it's got these copy examples because I have spent an hour prompting O1 to come up with a copy. So all we're going to do is we're going to scroll right to the bottom of this and we're going to copy. Now, first of all, if you copy this, if you pause this video and read through this prompt and try and use it yourself, it will be totally useless to you. So you have to actually get good at writing these yourself. Okay, so what we're going to do now is once we've copied this, we're going to come to Composer and I'm just going to go in and I'm going to write at the top here, um, edit the, and I'm going to tag the page. So this is the market research. And by the way, this is the first time I've done it with this. So I've got no idea if this is going to work or not, but we're going to see what happens first. So you can be really lazy here. All I've just said is edit the market research page and make the following components. Then I've given it that product requirement doc. Um, Make sure to add the components. We're going to import them and add them in the correct order. Then all we're going to do is just send it through. And the first thing that we're trying to do is just see if it can create things and what we can create. So we're using Claude 3.5 Sonnet. You can see here it's going to create and organize these components. So it's creating a hero section. It's gone ahead and said uh, there's another section here, my story section, problem epiphany bridge, blah, 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 blah. So basically it's gone ahead and created all the sections that we need, right? So this implementation, implementation creates all components, uses consistent styling, implements responsive design, um, you'll need to add a found image to the public folder, whatever, right? So we're going to accept all of these changes. Obviously, we've got a whole load of errors coming through. Now we're going to come back to the page and let's just copy these errors. First of all, let's come to features, resync the index. And this is a little tip for anybody who's beginning with AI coding. Always consistently resync your index. It will massively speed up your development process. So we're going to say, please resolve these errors. And basically, we're getting some issues, I think, with a lot of imports. Also, the way that I created this product requirement doc, I gave it some example code. And I probably shouldn't have given it things like the uh, call to action button and the action buttons here. I probably should have avoided that, but it is what it is. So it's gone ahead and it's just recreated them and rebuilt them. So it's gone ahead and fixing the errors here. And there's a whole load of problems because of where it's actually finding things, right? So we've got client call to action button, which is this one here, but it thought it was in UI call to action button, right? Which it seems to have created this new one. I'm not really sure which one it's using. So um, hopefully this should fix some of the errors. And then this is just the process that you follow, right? You just continually go around um, and keep following this process. So you can see here, right, is your app idea actually worth building? 
It's created different sections to the website. Now, I'm not saying this is perfect by any means, but now what we've done is created the structure of this landing page. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six sections, and that's exactly what I asked it. But more importantly, right, if we come into the market research section, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six sections. So if, for example, I don't like the hero section, I can come into here and I can say, for example, let's just resync the index again. And we can work on just the hero section. So I can say in the hero section, can we make it look more like this? And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a screenshot from just my other hero section. So we're going to copy this, put it in. Um, do not add the countdown timer. Now, I'm obviously going to go ahead and spend more time on this just on my own without having to record it, and I will probably make some more videos in the future. But um, what we can basically do now is we've got these different components, and once we've got these different components, it gives us a huge ability now to be able to um, be quite specific with our changes and our edits, right? So not only can I go in and change the copy, right? And I can write out the copy, but if I decide I want to put, you know, stop building blindly on top of this one, then I can do that, right? If I want to put images into a specific section, then I can do that. If I wanted to have, um, I don't know, something like this, and I want to add it into a specific section, I can easily do that by referencing the specific file. Um, and that's one of the most important things that you could do when you're learning to build with AI, uh, is learn how to build these components and put things in the right place. Um, so here we go, you can see from idea to MVP, and all it's done, right, is it's just created exactly the same thing because of the screenshot. Um, so we probably should have added more information to that prompt and said actually, instead of just copying it, um, let's just go back and say, um, keep the copy the same. So again, we're just going to go back and remodify the hero section um, because I want to make sure we actually retain this entire copy. Obviously, the button needs some changing, needs some fixing, um, but we also want to put the image that's going to be in there. I've asked it to put a border around it as well, so it's easy for me to see where that placeholder image is actually going to go if I like the design of the web page. Now. This is the steps that I follow with every single build, whether it's I'm building an app, whether it's I'm building a website, whatever it is I'm building, I just go through and I prompt it using 01 first to create me the product requirement doc. Then I just hand it over to Cursor. Cursor takes that and starts building, right? So if I were to actually get all of this built in, if I were to write it myself, I'm gonna be missing out so much stuff. And the reason for that is because I'm just assuming knowledge. I know in my head what needs to be done, but the AI doesn't know that stuff. So it's not gonna actually do it. It's just gonna skip things out. Now, while this isn't perfect, it's a very good start and I can very, very quickly fix these issues and fix these errors. So I've just gone through and continued the same prompting method that I showed you before. I'll actually show you the chat history on what I did, but I just wanna show you an update on what I've got now. So I've got this app preview image here. We need to fix this button. We then created a hard way and a smart way uh, for using my app. <coughs> um, just increased the text that I've written in this section. I still need to add an image here. Then we created this section here where we can add the images. And then I created the uh, features section of the app. So now you can see what different things the app will do. Um, and then we just need to add in images here. We've got a how it works section, and then we've got the call to action section. So we're basically done, right? So let's just go back through and have a look at the prompts that I sent through. So first of all, I basically just explained that in the hero section, there's a pill that says built with AI, learn how to in tonight's class, remove it. I then said uh, there's a button, but the button shouldn't have an image in it. You can pause and read through these prompts that I've written. Like I say, these prompts aren't going to be useful to you, but it just shows you how I actually go ahead and make changes. But what you will notice is I've said make these changes one, two, three. I haven't actually gone more than three changes. And in each change, I've referenced the specific component that I need those changes made in. And this is why you need to be making these components, because it makes it so much easier. Otherwise, right, I've got to explain in the page.js file to go to a specific section and find that and then tweak it and change it. And that that is why you end up getting things changed across your entire app or your entire page because you're not splitting the code up and it's much easier to do it like this right I'm only talking to 100 lines of code here rather than having to talk to a, a page that could be you know a thousand or two thousand lines of code um, again you can see I basically just explained go ahead and add in this text here so I've given it the text to add it's gone ahead and made those changes and it's just a matter of continually iterating again um, 
I created this red and green section, but it added in images. So I then told it to go ahead and add in these bullet points, which is done. So that's basically what I did. Two extra prompts to go from where I was to where I am now. Now, the next thing I want to do is change the image in this section. I want to fix these um, circles here. I want to change this to say used by. Uh, I want to add the button back in to fix this. Okay, so we're just going to send this through. And for this one, I'm going to actually use the agent. Uh, first of all, actually, again, come back to features. Resync the index. I think I've already done that. And then... Okay, we can't do that. Whatever, we'll just do normal mode. And then we're going to send that through. Now, the reason um, that I'm doing this is I just want this top section to look good. So again, it's just going to modify the hero component. Now, this isn't exactly anything complicated that we're doing here, but I just wanted to show you my workflow. So all we need to do is add in the images, and then we've basically got a website that kind of works, right? At the moment, right, this is the web page that I'm currently using that's converting, so theoretically this should do better. So we're just going to accept these changes. We're going to come back. Copy the errors. One thing I also do is if we come to inspect, and again, if you're a beginner, this will probably be useful for you. If you come to the console section, so we can actually copy all of this stuff. Here. And for the most part, right, if we just literally just give it a list of errors, and like this is lazy, you should probably do more, but for the sake of this video, um, now if you guys want to learn how to build your own apps using AI, then below this video, will be a link. I do a live class every week where I'll show you sort of my process for building with AI. So come along to that um, and I will teach you everything that I know. Cool. So we've now added in the image. It's changed the colors a little bit, but whatever. And the rest of it is still the same. So Pretty happy with that. Claim your free strategy call now. That button needs to go underneath, and I want a clearer definition between each of these sections. Uh, also, this bit here isn't working, so I've actually already created that somewhere. So I'm just going to say we already have this stuff here. For the five-star review section. So all I've said now is the five star review section, we've already actually written the code, I've given it the sample code with all of the images that it needs to use. Please update this. And then also I'm going to see if it can move this button beneath this image here. Obviously right, this image we want to make it better. But for now I just wanted the placeholder image just to show you guys. So you can see how in like five prompts we've got a website which already kind of shows what our app does. It looks pretty decent, we can make it better, we can work on it, but for now I'm kind of happy with this. I just needed something very quick. To write this myself, if I had to use like a, a standard website builder, it would take me hours. Cool, so it's gone ahead and it's fixed those five-star reviews. It's put the button below the image. The next thing that I need to do is go ahead and find images for each one of these and also for each section of the app. Double check all of the copywriting. Remove this button here. So actually we'll do that now. So I've just changed the button now, validate your product idea, fill in the simple form, and there we go, we're done. So I'm just going to end this tutorial here. There's obviously some stuff that I still need to do, some changes that I still need to make, but you can see how you can very, very quickly start to put web pages together for whatever it is that you're building. Right? So just to show you uh, something that I spent a little bit longer on, this is my current landing page for my coaching offer took me probably about an hour to build this. Obviously you can see we've got some really cool colors here, so I'm gonna go ahead and make the same changes to this. We're gonna add some cool textures to the background. But for now, I'm pretty happy with this. Let me know what you guys think. If you've got any questions, let me know down below in the comments. If you would like to learn how to build your own apps using AI, and if you would like to learn how to go from idea to MVP using AI, if you go to codespring.app, you can actually come to a live class where I'm gonna teach you everything that I've learned how to build using AI.